One of the key issues I raised in my testimony at the Cohen inquiry was the conflicted mandate the DFO is struggling with. They have a constitutional mandate to protect our oceans and our wild salmon stocks. They have a political mandate to advocate for the aquaculture industry. And in effect, they're acting as the promotional arm of aquaculture in Canada. They spend an inordinate amount of money subsidizing the industry, supporting their research, going to trade shows, producing glossy brochures, meeting with retailers, and delivering the message that open net cage aquaculture is fundamentally sustainable. Now they're also charged with regulation and enforcement of the aquaculture industry. These mandates cannot exist together. They are fundamentally in conflict. And what Living Oceans and our, our colleagues in CAR are advocating is that we start extricating those. That if we're going to promote and advocate for the aquaculture industry in Canada, that responsibility should be delegated to another department. It's not up to us to say which department, could be Industry Canada, could be Agriculture Canada, but get it out of DFO, leave DFO with the primary mandate to protect our wild fish, our ocean health, and regulate and enforce the aquaculture industry regulations and requirements. During the testimony at the Cohen Inquiry, one of the key witnesses we heard from was Dr. Christy Miller, who's been studying a genomic abnormality in sockeye salmon that may be related to the crash in 2009. But there's a lot to be learned still. She doesn't know what the source of this genetic disruption is. She doesn't know whether it's infectious or not. She doesn't know whether it's related to the fish farms or not. We need to do that research. And yet DFO has failed to date to commit to allow her to continue the research. They're not providing the funding. But at the same time, the department and Agriculture Canada and other federal government departments are giving hundreds of thousands of dollars to the aquaculture industry. They have a program for aquaculture innovation that's giving major corporations, most of them Norwegian-owned, money to strengthen their nets, to deal with flesh softening disease, which is a problem for the industry, but not for the ecosystem. They gave the Canadian Aquaculture Industry Alliance $800,000 over two years for lobbying and advocacy work. And yet they can't give Dr. Miller $20,000 so that she can go test for the presence of this genomic abnormality on farm fish as well as on wild fish. It's just unacceptable and DFO has to reorder its priorities. One of the things we learned during the search of do documents in the Cohen Inquiry was that CAR and Living Oceans had come this close to getting all the funding we needed for closed containment pilot projects in 2009. We uncovered a memo from the Director of Aquaculture with, from DFO to Minister Shea advocating the federal government invest $10 million. We had the provincial government support. The minister was advocating for investment in the fund. It had gone to Treasury Board for the inclusion in the provincial budget. We had raised $5 million from philanthropic foundations. We were this close. And then in February 2009, there was a ruling in the BC courts that jur shifted jurisdiction of aquaculture to the federal government province was facing an election, aquaculture was a contentious issue, they needed to do something. Now it was federal responsibility and the money that we had, had worked so hard to secure was gone. The federal government wasn't going to invest if the province wasn't, and now they had to set up an entire department to oversee the industry. But we're still working at it and we're still very, very convinced that this industry will eventually embrace innovative technology, get those net cages out of the water, and move to close containment.